community of passionate researchers from different fields devote themselves to study the meteor phenomenon. They crave for answers to questions such as how the solar system was formed and the origin of life. Carl Sagan said himself, The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Meteoroids provide the primary source of extraterrestrial material to our planet, so they can help us answering these questions. In average, more than 50 tons of this material enter our planet daily, mostly in the form of dust and meteor showers. In fact, the latter provide us a beautiful show in a dark night. On the other hand, larger objects are less common but might be dangerous to us, as the most recently one in Shell Abyss. For this reason, accurate models are necessary to simulate a meteor entry. These models can be applied to interpret the meteor observations and assess the incoming object's risk. The objective of my thesis was to develop models able to describe the multi-physics phenomena of a meteorite entry. I focused on different flow aspects, such as the high temperature surrounding the object and the light emitted, and also the, these extreme conditions impact the material itself. The meteoroid enters the atmosphere with extreme velocities, compressing the surrounding environment and thus forming a strong shock wave. Behind the shock wave, the pressure and temperature increase substantially, causing a series of chemical reactions. In this thesis, we model the hypersonic flow along the stagnation streamline using a finite volume method. The hypersonic flow environment is hard to predict because it involves complex phenomena thus requiring accurate physical chemical models. State-of-the-art models able to cope with such extreme environments were provided by the library Mutation++. In this figure, we observe the temperature and the flow composition for an object flying at 15 km per second. The grey, blue and red area correspond respectively to the shock, shock layer and boundary layer along the stagnation streamline. We observe a substantial increase of the temperature across the shock and strong dissociation and ionization reactions of the chemical species. The surrounding heat is transferred to the meteorite, causing the material to melt and eventually to evaporate chemical species such as sodium, magnesium and iron. The vapor close to the interface cannot be described by the hydrodynamic equations due to non-equilibrium effects. This non-equilibrium results in a kinetic layer called the Knudsen layer, caused by a non maxwellian description of the species. The presence of this layer creates a jump of macroscopic variables such as temperature, density and velocity at the vapor-liquid interface. In this thesis, we have developed a model that is derived from the solution of the Boltzmann equation and includes the jump of properties across the Knudsen layer. This figure shows a good agreement of the evaporation flux between our models and the numerical solution of the Boltzmann equation. Evaporation is not the only cause of meteor ablation, as the flow impinges on the molten material the liquid layer is sheared away by aerodynamic forces. To investigate meteoroid ablation, the NASA Asteroid Threat Assessment Project has performed a series of experiments in the ArcJet facilities at NASA Ames Research Center. These experiments provided validation data to our models that were developed with our NASA colleagues. As a first step, we have built a simple material solver able to estimate the melting for stony metal materials. Afterwards, we derive a shear ablation model starting from the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations within the molten layer. This melting model, together with the evaporation presented previously, enabled to study the material degradation at the stagnation point. This figure shows the stagnation point recession obtained with our models and the comparison with experimental results. One important characteristic of the meteor phenomenon is the light emitting during the entry. This light is owned to the radiative processes inherent to hypersonic entry. The experimental observation of these radiative processes enables astronomers to classify the meteoroid and to understand their origin. The facility is utilized for the reproduction of the aerothermodynamic environment of atmospheric entry plasma flows.
carried out an experiment of a real meteoroid to study the radiative processes in the plasma environment caused by meteor ablation. For operational reasons, we've embedded the meteoroid sample into a cork holder. In this work, we have used the hybrid statistical narrowband model developed by VKI and Ecole Centrale Paris to model the radiative intensity of the chemical species. This figure shows the radiative intensity of the ablation species obtained with our models and the comparison with the experimental data recorded by three spectrometers. The final step of this project was to combine all the models mentioned previously and to simulate the entry of the lost city bullet. Our method allows us to estimate the light emitted by the bolide and thus correlate it with the observations made on January 3, 1970. In this figure, we show the magnitude of the lost city luminosity and the comparison with our models. Despite the complexity of the problem, we have obtained a fair match with the observations, giving us confidence in our methodology. This work paved the way for the development of high-fidelity numerical methods and modeling of space debris ablation. This topic has gained a lot of momentum recently due to the enormous quantity of junk that surrounds our planet. Therefore, space agencies have put forward mitigation guidelines that would allow us to clean our space. I'm working on the development of new high-fidelity numeric approaches to predict the degradation of space debris when they're entering to the Earth atmosphere, which is actually very similar to a meteor ablation. I'm building my numerical methods uh, directly based on the models developed by Bruno during his PhD, and in particular his advancement about new evaporation models and um, the equation proposed to describe the melting of solid bodies will be used as such in the numerical framework of my project. So I'm working on the characterization of uh, uh, the aerothermal mechanical response of space debris to atmospheric entry plasmas, and the research of Bruno uh, allowed me to uh, develop uh, ablation models to study and design the configuration and optimize the test condition in our laboratory, the VKI Plasmatron facility, and these experiments will serve as a benchmark uh, for an ESA project concerning new satellite design guidelines uh, under the name of Design for Humise. In this thesis, we have presented a series of predictive engineering models to study meteor ablation, giving a better insight of the phenomenon. These models can be directly compared with observations, allowing the researchers from the different communities to derive their quantities of interest and answer fundamental questions. Finally, I would like to thank FNRS for supporting this research. Mm -hmm.